Okay, it looks like my camera's still working good. Okay. Well, nobody said they were trying to blow the ship up. Now we got everybody. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a real quick recap because uh, we didn't play for the last two weeks. So um, you guys were on the Martin. The Martin had. Uh, jumped um, into a system where there were pirates. Uh, an Oslan pirate was waiting for Hroll. He was waiting for you guys. You guys, uh, well, not you specifically, but the Martin. Uh, the Martin couldn't defend itself because... Uh, well, first of all, the escorts had jumped to the uh, original destination, which would have been the planet, uh, and so they were they were too far away uh, to lend assistance. So the Martin crew decided to, after a short fight and getting the power knocked out decided to uh and the engines the maneuver engines decided to hold up in the bridge as kind of a defensive position uh while um faust just decided he was going to hold up in a different position which was the lounge and he could see down the hallway to uh the vault where uh, the purser, purser Vaughn, uh, had the key and he shot him in the back, killing him. And then, uh, Ildritz came down and to find out, to, to let him know what was going on and, uh, decided to go check on the purser and found that he did have the key, opened it up. At which point the Oslon started to board the ship uh, with uh, their their Marines and uh, well in through some of the like the engine room because there's gaping holes and things like that uh, and uh, so the uh, having entered the vault uh, discovered that there were. Uh, some gems in some boxes and some records and uh, things like that. So, uh, so Ildritz scooped up a bunch of the records and Faustus scooped up a bunch of the gems and then made their way up to the shuttle, which your group, uh, your internal party, decided that you were going to get into the launch and uh, possibly escape uh, capture by these Oslan while they are roaming the ship. Um, at which point, you guys made it into the launch. The, uh, the uh, Oslan are in the lower decks and the crew of the Martin are in the upper deck in the held and the Marines are held up in the bridge. So if they tried to, you know, come onto the bridge, they would, there would be a firefight. Um, and that's pretty much where we left off. Uh, the, the escorts are on their way to the Martin. They, uh, 
they anticipate getting there uh, as soon as possible, which is probably like another hour or two, and uh, which is not going to be fast enough to save anybody from these Oslon if they decide to come or like try to breach the upper decks. All right, so that's where we begin. We begin with you guys all making it to the launch. And uh, let me see if I have a launch set up. I have... Correct. Yeah, you're right. You threw the uh, four-way key into the vault and closed the vault, so there's no way... Unless someone's got a master key or something somewhere. Um... Okay, so um, hmm, let me see if I can do something real quick for you guys. I'm sorry. Um, add a page. I wouldn't think so. I'm doing something real quick. So if you guys want to chit chat, that's fine. I am creating something. No, just you guys. Not even. Oh, here it is. No, I'm getting there.
Yeah, a few, there's a few. If you, if you count the Marines and everything. Okay, so let me copy some people and drag and drop. So that is correct. And okay, I'm copying you guys. I am pasting you. Reese. Yeah, I'm going to resize you to the new map scale. Okay, that looks about right. And Do they? So there's there's two seats up in the bridge and then there's the passenger seats. You don't see a whole lot of cargo space, uh, but there is a broad door on the left for loading and unloading, you know, larger items. And then you got a little airlock, you got a little bathroom, and that's about it. And an engine, and that's about it. There's not even access to the engine. It's not like it's an engine room. It's just an. I mean, there might be a like a maintenance panel or something to get to the engine, but yeah, yeah. And you guys are the only ones in the launch. And if I zoom in. Yeah, maneuver one. So, not not a very fast ship. Yeah, not a very fast ship, but it'll get you there. And... Under, not under library data. It should be under handouts. Yeah, from the outside, you know, that's what it looks like. All right, so um, what would you guys like to do while sitting, hiding in launch? So you're closing the wooden door? Okay. Yeah, it's it's a it's a it's a door that could be breached fairly easily. It's not like a it's not a bulkhead door. It's just a Star Trek sliding door.
Oh yeah. Yeah, the 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 gazelle class close escorts are on their way. You got to turn the power on to do anything with this ship. Except look out, you can look out a window and you see bulkhead on the inside of the docking bay, but that's it. No. The the pilot can open the launch bay doors. Okay. Yeah, so um they open. You can see out into the darkness. The blackness of space. Um, it's, it's just, just, yeah, yeah, you don't have to have a key. You just have to start entering, you just start, you know, press the on button. Yeah, as, as, as long as you got the key fob near the engine, no, it's fine. You just, yeah, you just power it up. You go through the, go through the power ups. There's not a passcode or anything like that. You just, you just start. Powering it up. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna pull up the uh, pre-flight checklist and go th and go step one, and step two, or are you just gonna or are you just gonna do like an emergency, like get everything working? Okay, yeah, no worries. Make a small craft piloting roll. I guess it would be not spacecraft. I think it's small craft. Under 100 tons. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it looks right. Yeah, so um, it's taking a while to remember. It's, it's taking a while to remember where all the uh, startup procedures are and because you're normally flying starships you're not flying small craft so you're you're having a you're having a little difficulty powering everything on yeah it's been a while you're getting there though okay while while the ship is powering on does uh, Ildris wish to do wish to do anything while you're just sitting there with your feet up on the dash? Well, you have all the details on the left side of the launch map.
Negative. You are not doing anything. So what would you like to do? And yes, if you if you were to fly off of the ship, it would be almost obvious that you are flying off the ship. Okay, give me a comms roll. Yep. Okay, so you, you turn the radio on and you hear uh, there's a lot of chatter on the radio. Uh, on a variety of different frequencies. Um, do you want to pick up the Imperial frequencies or do you want to pick up the pirate frequencies? Because you, you recognize that there are there are a couple of different channels being used. Uh, and they're not they're not being encrypted. Well I should say the pirate ones are not being encrypted. The Imperial ones are, but the launch decrypts them. So you can you can talk to that or you can listen in to the Imperial ones because you're in, in an Imperial launch and you can listen to the pirate ones because they don't care. <laughs> okay. So um <clears throat> it's it's almost all an Oslan voice yelling at his people. Okay, so he's he's being very like gravelly and growly, uh, and you have a pretty good idea that it's that it's an Oslan just based on the guttural tones, and he's saying things like, "Just push it out, get it out in space, just push it," and then uh, we'll pick it up with the salvage ship. Get the don't. Don't worry about the crew on the bridge. Leave them. They'll die in time. They'll they'll suffer when they run out of air. And then then you hear something, uh you hear a voice behind the Oslan. It sounds very melodical, like um very elven if you want, if if that was a thing. It would sound very like pretty or but it's a male and he says incoming missiles and and you hear the gravelly Oslan say we don't have much time get this out get 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 just push it out and you, you hear of course from the other end yes sir we're um we're having trouble there's these uh there's these robots down here that's trying to keep us from uh from taking the cargo and and he goes just i don't care just get it done well he means leave the uh launch bay <laughs> so just ram into the Martin's internal wall 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. So so you um you your the launch kind of uh leaves the launch bay door or la leaves the Martin fairly automatically. It's not um you have all these uh warning lights and and indicators that pretty much prevent you from bumping into the ceiling or the floor or anything like that. It's basically almost autopilot takes you out. Okay, so you're you're in space next to the Martin. You can see the surrounding area and uh at which point you see a really bright flash of light. Super bright. And uh the uh the um the sunshade on the windows it's like a the brighter the light the darker the shading because it it is uh it's like an electronic uh what do you call that um basically a, like electronic sunshade that goes across the window when there's a bright light it goes completely black there's a bright light complete blackness and then you have to make a piloting roll because there is a little bit of a shock wave. And FYI, it's hard to have a shock wave in a vacuum. Okay, so you, unless it's a nuke, and that's exactly what goes off. You, you, uh, you have this big, huge blast. Your ship, your shuttlecraft is thrown off, you know, like pushed away from the Martin. But with your excellent piloting, you're able to prevent any kind of collision or anything with the Martin. And then the sunshade disappears. And then uh, you can see the meat. You see the meat grinder at that point. Uh, the meat grinder is a fairly large warship. It's an Ozlon warship, and you can see that there's this. It has a big, huge, uh, mangled spot on its side. And uh, yeah, like it, like it's been, it's been struck by something. What do you want to do? You don't see any fighters, and this is all visual, by the way. Okay. Yeah, give me a sensor's roll. You get a plus two. Well, it's hard to do when there's only two seats on the cockpit. Yeah, there's like six more missiles inbound. Oh, they're they're not like you probably have like ten minutes before they get there. Okay.
They're coming from in system. Uh, you you probably uh, see two gazelle class close escorts behind the missiles. Okay, so you start maneuvering and uh, you hear over the radio from the pirates, let them go, don't worry about them, they're inconsequential. Get our, get our weapons, uh, target, you know, target those gazelles. Yeah, after another 10 minutes or so, another nuke goes off against the meat grinder. You can you you can detect that there was a but you're but you're maneuvering away and so you're out of the shockwave blast area and uh it takes a second hit. And this and this the smaller ships are uh, dancing around the outside of the uh, area, trying to stay out of the line of fire. And every now and then you'll see a, uh, a particle strike as well on the meat grinder. Ah, the meat grinder's not having any problems at all. It's a warship. Yeah, yeah. What? Oh my. It's probably the best science fiction TV show ever. What would you say is a better one? No. Babylon 5 reminds me of Fraggle Rock. It, it reminds me of Sesame Street. <laughs> That's right. Uh Okay, so after you after you fly perpendicular away out of out of the blast area and away from the fight, what would you like to do? No, 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 no. The uh, the meat grinder is somewhere around seventeen hundred, and the the gazelles are four hundred. Okay, you can see that you can while you're watching the battle. Um, I assume you're not watching with eyes; you're watching with your like 
magnification sensors, uh, your your like ten times magnification or whatever. Um, the meat grinder's entire side opens up, and ten particle beam bays. Uh, fire um, and a, a bay it's like um, it's basically the particle beam is inside the hull and it's protected by a, a door that door opens up and they basically do a broadside uh, you know like 20 particle beams flare again and again against the gazelles Um, it, I, probably 50 tonners. You don't really know. It's an Oslan ship, so they're not built exactly the same way. But, uh, yeah, probably around 50 tons. Correct. The exec, exec. I don't think I gave you the stats of the exec system. So, so there you go. One thing I want to point out is the population. Okay, that's going to be a long, um, well, everything is in system. So no matter which direction you fly, you're flying towards the sun. Because you guys are way out there. It'll just take a few days. No, no, no. it's just a few days. You guys, you guys are at... 45 million kilometers. From the, uh, the main world. Checking the flight time here. Wait, did I just pass it? Nope. Okay. Here it is, travel times. 45 million, you're looking at 37 hours. At 1G. Okay, so your the, the the launch starts heading in into system, and uh, you get uh, you get a radio hail from someone. Beep 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 beep. beep. Ring a ding ding, ding a ling ring. Okay. 
And? Yeah, bing, 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 bing. And then you push a button. It stops the binging. No. Hello? Is anybody there? Okay, hey, um, so you're in launch alpha. Uh, how many of the crew escaped? What's the situation? Okay, well, uh, I see that you're burning into system, and we're burning to the Martin, so there's no time for us to burn to a stop to take you in. We are just going to blow past you, so just keep up your escape velocity and head to the world, and we'll link up to you as soon as we can. Okay, um, I don't know who you are, but that's weird. And then he hangs up. <laughs> All right, so, um, so 37 hours later, you appear. You are slowing down because the way space travel normally works is you go about halfway, then you have to turn around to slow down. So you build up this huge amount of speed, turn around, and then you burn to slow down so that you don't just like go at like light speed into a planet or something. So, uh, so you slow down, but you get close to the world and your sensors detect an orbital space station around the main world of exec. There's only two people uh, at this time. There's only two people that can communicate with that system. Oh yeah. Um. Are you okay? We. we our, our sensors detected uh, nuclear explosions, and then we detected a, a like a a, a, a distress call. Uh, but it wasn't directed at us. It was directed at some military vessels that had just jumped into system. But um, we don't have any way to go out and rescue anybody. We have one ship and it's and it's designed to mine the gas giant and that's it. We could, I guess if there was a an emergency we could go out there and do something but it seems like the military vessels are taking uh well took the brunt of it. Yeah, you can you can dock at our you can dock at one of our external airlocks. Whichever one's convenient for you.
ja. Well, there's only 12 of us on this space station. On this, in this system. This, this, the space station is a gas station. I mean, we have, uh, we're a full service gas station. You can pull up, you can dock, we can run some gas lines to you, we can refill your gas, uh, we can wipe your windows and clean the bugs out of your fuel scoops. Yeah, uh, we don't even have a, we don't even have a lounge. I mean, we have a lounge, but it's not like a, a public. You know, you got to get a key to use the restroom. Uh, so you fly up. There's no requirement to do a piloting skill roll, but I'm going to make you make one anyway. Just don't roll a two. Yeah, that's fine. So you dock. It's a standard docking uh, port. So your your airlock will match up with their docking port, and you can just... So there's a seal where you can just walk on and off your launch onto the space station. So there's some people at your door. There's probably four. There's four people at your door. So when you open it up, there's like four people standing there. They're like, oh, where, where are you guys from? Oh, we haven't gotten anybody from Capitol here. Um, so when was, when, when was, where were you guys jumping in from? Um, somebody else in the crowd says, well, this is an Imperial launch uh, registered with the Imperial Navy. Uh, and so you guys just took it off the ship? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so um do you need to be refueled? I mean, it's it's a launch. You're not making any jumps or anything. Right. Okay, well, you're welcome to stay on the launch since there are no staterooms on the space station for incoming traffic. We do have food. Do you need food? Yeah, I mean, yeah, we've got these like hot dogs in a bag. You just put them in the microwave. Yeah, we got microwaves. No, you don't 
you guys don't have any kind of microwave or anything, but the space station does. Broker? <laughs> Nobody's here as a broker. We're mi Uh, if we don't, we don't really have people, uh, yeah, if, if there's any ships coming into port, you'll have to ask them. Now we, we do get, we do get ships in like at least once a week, but that doesn't mean they're looking for passenger or, you know, anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward time. I'm gonna fast forward time a little bit. Um, <clears throat> the gazelles don't return, and the the Martin doesn't come here to dock to get fuel. They they basically you you don't know what happened to them. They didn't transmit any kind of like messages or uh, like flight plans or anything to you guys anyway maybe to the station but uh <clears throat> yeah so there's no there's no communications between you and and the martin for the next week or so uh now in that week a ship does come through and um it's on its way to Acrid. It is a far trader. So it's it's like a 200 ton ship. It's pretty small. It flies in, uh, realizes that this really isn't a place to buy or sell any kind of cargo or anything like that. That's not this kind this kind of station. It, um, and but they you you can tell that they are getting refueled. Um, what would you like to do? <clears throat> Everyone can advance your uh, study period by one week because basically you're sitting here doing nothing but studying for the, the last week. Uh, I'm not keeping track of your study weeks. It's on your first page of your character sheet. It tells you right there. Okay. So yeah. Okay, so you go up to the ship. Um... One moment. Not Liberty. No, it's not the Liberty. Not that either. Okay. Maybe I put it under books. Okay. Keep closing my folder. Okay.
Oh, here we go. Found it. I have to magnify this. Okay. No. Don't use it. Now, um, I do actually. There's there's multiple ways to run skill development, and uh, the the training through the through the study periods is only one of the ways that I use. There is another way, but you haven't hit a milestone that record that gives you any points. So uh, you just gotta wait for it. Okay, so uh, the free trader is called the how do I pronounce that? Patinalong. <laughs> I am going to do that. Yep, and it is a uh, type A free trader. It pulls in, you know, and you knock on the door and hand out. Ship art. looks a lot like that uh, but think think of it as more of a, a, a teal color instead um, yeah so you knock you knock on the door and you get a little intercom message or uh, a, a, an intercom response hello uh, is the refueling finished? Um... Where are you heading? Well, we were we were heading toward Acrid, uh, but but we're not set on it. Well, 
Everything's got a price. Uh, you need to get to Tech World? Well, where, where do you need to get to? Well, we were only going to Akrid because we were looking for, looking to sell our cargo. But, uh... We only have four tons. So it's not like we're, you know. Because if if you want to charter us, I I could we could take you through Tech World to Paul, then Porn, then Drinax, or we could go to Acrid, Anasir, Blue, Clark, then Drinax. Yeah, it'd be faster to go through Tech World. Tech World, Tech World, Paul, Porn, and Drinax. We're not going to Hilfer. Wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We could go to Hilfer. Hold on. Uh, Tech World, Hilfer. Yeah, I was looking at the red hex thinking that that was a red circle, and it's not. That just means they hate you guys. Yeah, yeah, Hilfer, um, if we go one, two, three jumps to Drinax, uh, 30,000 per passenger. There's five of you. So 150,000. That'll cover all of our life support and fuel and time and we might actually be able to sell our cargo at Drinex. See what we have is we have uh, okay we have um, designer apparel
Well, I appreciate that you are a member of the Traveler's Aid Society, but uh, you can't. You can't do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's locked to you. Um, do you have anything else to trade? Uh, you do not know the value of your gems. I told you the value so you could write it down, but you do not, you do not know that value. This captain does not know the value of those gems. You could hand him one gem and say it was a million credits. He wouldn't know. So would he accept it? You could hand him the whole backpack and say it's, you know, a million credits and he still might not believe you. You would have to get like certificates of authenticity and and uh, appraisal values and stuff. But you can. You can try. <clears throat> They're not a used cars used car dealership. One of them says he'll offer you fifty credits because that's what he's got in the bank. Another one says he'll offer you um a hot dog in a bag. These guys don't have any money. Not like not in the not in the amount that you would expect from the launch. Yeah, we'll we can we can take collateral. If you've got if you've got something worth you know, something of value, you guys look trustworthy. You guys don't look like the pirates we ran into not too long ago. So, you guys seem like good people. Unfortunately, no. Um, we have a cargo hold, but it it wouldn't f there's no way it would fit inside there. So you want me to call you when we're done getting refueled? Well, we only have a you have like four hours. Okay. 
No. Yeah, no ship under 100 tons can make a jump. Well, Tech World um, could probably do it. Yeah, of course. That's your that's your only living quarters. You you guys have been sleeping on the floor or in a chair. Um Yeah, when you get to Tech World, uh well, you can you can send mail but because this is kind of a backwater, you know, off the beaten path kind of area, it might take a while before a ship is going to come through here that's going to take your mail. And they have no need for combat armor.
So what are we doing? If everybody talks at the same time, I can't hear anyone. Okay. Do you approach this far trader with uh, your armor on and everything? And he's already told you he doesn't want armor. No, it's not collateral. Nope. Nope. You're going to have to give him something that he can use. So you're, so you're not offering the gems as collateral? I keep hearing multiple stories. I'm not hearing a solid story. I'm getting 15 different people telling me what they're not or doing or not doing. What are you doing? And doing it again. Do you have broker skill? Or, well, I understand. You're all there, I would assume. Because everyone wants to talk, so I assume everybody's there. So anybody with broker skill can give me a broker skill role. Education, education, education. It's education. Don't just roll. Just roll. <laughs> okay, this is not what, no, this is before that. So you're rolling and you know that one gem is probably like a hundred credits. Yeah, I mean, just glancing at it, you're saying this tiny little gem is pro. And when you say you're offering five gems, you're you're offering. Yeah, you're not offering. It, it's not. It's not like oh my god, I can't refuse. It's like you can't be serious. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, you might, you got like these little baggies or whatever. I mean, you can, you can say we got this 100 gems or whatever.
Okay, so you, you, you show him uh, a fairly sizable amount of gems. How much value of your gems are you showing? Because remember, you got 10 million credits worth of gems. So are you showing him a million credits worth? Are you showing him 10,000 credits worth? A merchant, a merchant as him, he probably has encountered gems before and has a pretty good idea of, not exact, but a relative value. Okay. Um, yeah, that'll do. And he holds his hand out waiting to receive it. Right. And so, yeah, so you give him like 200,000 worth of gems. Uh, this is just collateral. We're going to go to Tech World. We'll have these evaluated. And, you know, and then I'm, I'll take my 150. Thousand, well, I guess we'll have to sell them and then I'll get 150,000 credits and I'll take you all the way to Drenex. Okay, sounds good. Let me show you to your room or rooms, I guess. Uh, you'll notice that he's got a crew of, it looks like maybe five, five people. I had advanced the, the clock, the, uh, I hadn't advanced it. There you go. So you got your rooms, and there's a lounge at the end of the hall. And you'll notice that there's about five crew members. There's a big cargo hold on the on the first deck, uh, as well as the bridge, um, and then the pass. The the crew uh, quarters are down there. This is the passenger quarters. You have your whole deck to yourself, pretty much. Um, if you have anything. That needs to go into storage. We can put that in the cargo hold. You know, if you've got, you know, do you have anything that needs to be put into storage? Like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have like a, you can just put it in a bag and throw it in the corner or you can put it in a, if you have brought a box, which I, I don't think you have. Um, but yeah, if you've got like a little duffel bag or a laundry bag and you want to just put it in a corner somewhere, you're welcome to it. Uh, our cargo hold is now this cargo hold that you're seeing is not the full size of the cargo hold. Uh, I mean, it's not correct because the the map I'm showing you is of something called a free trader. And this ship that you're on is a far trader. And far traders have uh, expanded their jump drive. It's a lot larger. And the fuel tanks are a lot larger. So um, imagine, I'm going to draw on the map. 
Freehand? No, I mean, can't I draw a straight line? Pen line? Okay, maybe pen line will work. So that much space right there is taken up by engines and uh, and fuel. There we go. So it has a it, it has a much smaller cargo hold. Uh, the cargo hold is only sixty three tons instead of eighty five tons. So there's about twenty tons of cargo that was taken up for the engines and extra fuel. Yeah, the um four and Yeah, that's about right. Because there's supposed to be ten staterooms. So there's actually one extra stateroom than there should be. But that's okay. No, that's right. Seven and three. Yeah, there's ten staterooms. And the low berth shows you like uh, a bunch of low berths. That's this. Whoops. Okay. Great. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Gonna have to delete that. Yeah. Yeah. There's uh, seven, six low berths, not as many as you see there. Because this area right here is where the low berths are, number 13. <clears throat> well, if you want, if you want, we can put you in a low berth and wake you up when we get to Drenex. That would be a lot, that would be a lot less expensive. Hmm. Okay, right. I understand. Okay, well, enjoy the trip. Um, we have a steward that can take care of your um, cleaning and, you know, uh, changing your blankets and preparing meals and stuff like that. We also have a medic if anybody's injured and wants to take a look at, you know, you need, you need, uh, you know, if you, um, what's the word? Like if you catch a cold or something. Okay. Okay, so they detach from the spaceport and they're heading out of system. Are you going to um, assault them? Or are you going to, or are you going to, okay. I was going to say, or are you going to just explore the ship or something? Yeah, it'll be it'll be about four hours before we uh, enter jump space. So, yeah, we'll see you around. Okay, so if you want to wander the ship, you're welcome to it. Um, yeah. So, well, you didn't see anybody wearing anything other than just ship coveralls or whatever um the way down is right here on number two the common area so you just climb a ladder down and that brings you to uh an airlock actually um that brings you to the um cargo hold yeah, so there's like a yeah, there's like a path that goes right up through there. 
towards number seven. Okay, so you go down through the cargo hold, and the cargo hold is fairly empty. I mean, it's uh, this center area right here is like a uh, like a crane system to lift boxes and move things around. Uh, when you get up to this door right there, it's locked. And I assume, uh, yeah, you can try to get into the engine room. It's locked. But you are welcome to wander around in the in the areas that are not secure. Um, yeah, you don't even need to make a recon roll. They, they are not armed. Well, as far as you can make a recon roll, because they don't have anything like, they don't have like a pistol belt or a sword or anything like that, but that doesn't mean they're not armed. So go ahead and give me a recon roll. From what you can tell from the interaction with the steward, the steward didn't look like he was carrying anything other than uh, hot towels for you guys. Um, and the only other person you saw was the captain. And he didn't have any kind of gun or anything like that. Um, the So you haven't seen... the engineer and you haven't seen like whoever the pilot and navigator are it is it is that's an iris valve if you see like the little x that means it's a valve that looks like a camera shutter and it Well, you could take over the cargo hold. That is correct. They could turn the gravity to negative 1G to positive 1G to negative 1G to positive 1G to negative 1G to positive 1G. Yeah, you would just bounce off the roof and the floor. Exactly. Yeah, they could do that. Unless you found a way to disable the grav plates, you could do. You've been floating around, floating around in zero G. That's normally on an airlock. Not normally on, well, it could be on that door, but you didn't, just remembering when you were there, you didn't see anything like that. That's possible. I mean, the door might have some kind of security panel, which it did. It had a, like, a key combo. Plus I can't plus I can't send out a distress call. Okay, over the intercom they say uh we're pre we're preparing to jump. 
um, prepare yourselves, and you see all the lights dim. They go, like it becomes almost pitch black in the ship, and then you you feel the you feel the jump, um, and then after a second or so, the the lights all come back on. Oh no, that's just tradition. Uh, is anybody is anybody an engineer? I know you are. Um, yeah, give me an. Uh, I think uh, Kalen's an engineer, right? Um, yeah, give me give me anybody that's got. Um, so is jump actually. Anybody that's got maneuver drives <coughs> can make the roll. If you don't have the skill, you can't make the roll. Faustus has stepped away. His wife is calling him. Okay, well, Kaylin definitely has it. Um, you'll have noticed that on your flight out to jump space, the engines made periodic sputtering sounds. But it was period... <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, you can tell anybody. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they are. Every time you jump, the lights are supposed to dim. That's a that's a tradition, a, a naval tradition. Uh, the pilot or the navigator will dim the lights before the jump to ensure that the power plant has enough energy to make the jump but it's unnecessary with modern jump drives and power plants but in the early days when jump drives and power plants were unreliable they uh they did that and that tradition has carried over for a long time yeah yeah <laughs> right and luckily none of you feel nauseous or so you probably didn't miss jump okay so you're in jump space You guys are, um, you have had a chance to meet the entire crew. The entire crew has, over the course of the next few days, they all have come to the lounge to uh, prepare a meal or, you know, microwave some TV dinner or something like that. A hot dog's in a bag. And, uh... So you've had a chance to see every single one of them. The engineer looks like, you know, your traditional grease monkey. He doesn't, he, the only weapon he has on him might be a spanner, you know, or a, a, like a monkey wrench. The, uh, nobody else is carrying any kind of gun or blade or anything like that. They are.
So you're going to make a plan? Well, the captain, the captain will come and uh, meet with you guys in the middle of jump, just to just to shoot the shit and just to talk and you know say hello. And uh, he says, "My name is. I don't think I've introduced myself. Uh, my name is Captain Hansen, and uh, we. You know, if you if you hear if you hear our engines uh, sputtering or." Anything like that. Um, I've told the engineer not to push it past 0.8 G's because uh, for any length of time, because uh, we did take a few hits uh, from a pirate raid not too long ago, and we haven't had a chance to repair the maneuver drives, so so we're just putting along. Oh, in, in the exec system. You know, we made it to the spaceport. They, uh, we jumped in. Uh, they, there was a lot of wreckage. And they shot at us a couple of times, hit us. And we just made for port. They didn't chase us or come after us. Oh, we don't have anything like that. Okay. Well, I guess you're just going to insult me, so I'm just going to go back to my duties, and I'll catch you in the next one. I'm going back to my duties. Thank you. Uh, I enjoyed this conversation, and I guess uh, hopefully um, maybe tomorrow. Maybe you can find me when I'm off duty. Right. <laughs> like, where are you going to go? Jump space? All right. So, um, There are six low berths and five crew members. But that doesn't that doesn't mean they're empty.
the standard would be six. Yeah, you can't get to the engine room. Uh, let me let me look at this map a little bit better. Um, yeah, that door that door is secure. Yeah, and yeah.
Okay, as soon as he starts putting his combat armor, a red light comes on and says, burr, 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 Pirates! All your doors are locked. And you can hear the air being vented to space. So, uh, you guys, in a rush, in a hurry, throw on your vac suit slash combat armors to, to prevent yourself from dying. Yep. And you get a uh, get a radio signal um, at your intercom. Beep. You can't hear it because you're in vacuum. And then all of a sudden the gravity disappears. Now you're in zero G. You can just easily slide them open. Yeah, so you guys can get you guys can get into the hallway. You can you can get into the lounge. You can get into the the fresher and the, each other's rooms. Um, <clears throat> if they wanted to, they can open the doors at the airlock. But there's no air anymore, so that wouldn't have any effect. But they could like vent you into jump space. Which is like death. Okay, it's this right here. It's a hatch on the floor and uh, it's locked. If you open that, we'll vent you into space. Oh, you don't hear it. You see it on the display on the door. The keypad. <laughs> it'll it'll take a minute. They would have to refill the area with air. It's almost like you guys came on with combat armor and weapons and they were anticipating you trying to do something. <clears throat> okay. Well, yeah, it, if it's in, yeah, inside your helmet, yeah. Yeah. If you have a communicator, you guys can communicate. If you're standing next to each other, you can push your helmets up against each other and communicate. Okay, yeah. You're talking through helmets. Do you have a combat armor? Yeah, yeah, it's got a small, it's got a communicator inside of it. <clears throat> it's, it's local. It's not very powerful or anything. Okay, you start, you guys hear air coming back into the, into the chambers. Okay, as soon as you like, as soon as you get the explosives, you can hear 
because there's enough air in there. We can see what you're doing. What? Do you, why are you gonna? You're you're gonna doom all your you and your crew to jump space death. You just need to you just need to stand down. Take your take your explosives and your weapons and put them in the airlock. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll seal the airlock. And then we'll fly you to the next world and we'll let you out. And you can take your weapons. We don't have any beef with you. Go ahead. Um, I think you burnt that bridge. <clears throat> I, I considered it, but then that would be like inviting another, uh, attempt at taking the ship. So, no. That would be all five of you. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, you I I I believe you, but guilty by association. <laughs> yeah, if you would um put all your weapons in the airlock and uh we'll just we'll lock it up. And then what we'll do is we'll, when we land at the next, when we land at Tech World, what we'll do is we'll just open the airlock so that you guys can leave. And we'll keep the diamonds slash gems. Because they're not all diamonds. And we'll call it even. That's right. That's right. Right. All right, Faustus. Uh, that was that was. I appreciate um, your honesty and your your forthcoming of all of your weapons. But uh, your friends haven't complied yet. Okay. All right. You guys can keep your combat armor because you never know when the ship might go to vacuum. Okay. Tomlin? Yeah, they have like... They had like no weapons. You could have jumped them and hit hand to hand and probably would have won. <laughs> or just a pistol or something. Okay, so, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Mason, you dropping your stuff off? Tom, Tomlin? Okay, okay, so it's locked up. So now you guys can, can your all your doors and everything are unlocked. You guys can continue to walk around in the uh, upper deck. And uh, you can prepare your own food. Yeah, the the steward's not coming up there to be mugged or kidnapped for a uh, 
for a uh, hostage or something like that. So was there any other attempts to take over the ship? Okay, so you guys exit jump space. Uh, you assume it's at Tech World, right? Um, and the captain gets on the intercom and says, all right, um, we've reached the, the Tech World system. We're maneuvering in. Uh, when we land, we'll let you know when you can depart the ship. And I am double checking the population on Tech World. There are tens of people there. Okay. Um, it is an A class starport. Uh, it's it's Echo, which I think is thirteen, fourteen, it's fourteen. Um, but there's only tens of people there, so it's not like it's an industrial location. Tech world, here we go. Okay, so you get to the world and uh, you can see that the ship is landing on the planet. Um, yep, lands on the planet. Captain Hadson says... Um, you guys are free to leave. Uh, it is a thin atmosphere, so ensure that you have a rebreather or your or your spacesuit uh, until you get into the spaceport. The law level here is four, so assault weapons are prohibited. Um. Advanced combat rifle I do not think is an assault weapon here. Hang on just a second. Let me double check my. Right, but the, the scale I think is a little different than that. Use the magnification tool. Heavy armor is allowed. Um, explosives are allowed. Combat armor and battle dress is allowed. Energy weapons and laser weapons are allowed. And military weapons are allowed. So light, uh, light assault weapons and submachine guns are outlawed. So light assault weapon. Okay. But either way, you can you can take it into the spaceport and lock it up or something like that. Yep. 
Yeah, blades are not outlawed for a long time. Um, blades are outlawed at tech or at law level eight. Yeah, you're good to go here. Okay, so when you when you get there, I assume you guys throw on your gear, grab your stuff, head out of the ship. Okay. Uh, the spaceport looks very looks very high tech. Nobody comes out to meet you. Nobody comes out to uh, shake your hand or take your birthing payments or anything like that. Uh, nothing like that. There's no. There's there is a little. Uh, bus that it's not a bus it's more like a, an open air it's an open air truck like an open air it's like a bus with no walls so it, it has chairs in the back but it's like a convertible it has no roof and no walls but it drives up and there's nobody driving it Yeah, and it's it has like uh, TWSP on the side of it, right? So um, you 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 assume it has something to do with the spaceport. So yeah, so you climb on, and it says uh, you get like a little message from the front of the of the vehicle. Uh, where would you like to go? I can take you to the admin offices. I can take you to the hotel area. I can take you to the uh, the lounge and shop, the lounge and the shopping area. Okay. The... Uh, that should be about a two-minute ride. Sit back and enjoy the sights. And then it drives off. There's no sights. All you see is concrete jungle. All you see is a spaceport. You don't see any people. You just see this thing driving. Um, as you go by uh, a certain area, you don't really know what the area is. It might be a storage area of maybe fuel or maybe um, sensitive materials or something you're not sure but there is a robot uh, walking around over there uh, and you drive past him and uh, it pulls up the, the this uh, truck and it stops and it says, we are at your destination. Right. And you get out and you go inside. And you, it looks like a, a your standard shopping mall, but very small, like maybe five shops. And uh, there's, there's a food vendor. There looks like there is a gift shop. And uh, there's like a kiosk for information. And okay, yeah, so you, you go over to the kiosk, and it's basically just has uh, when you approach it, your little if you have a earpiece communicator, you would hear it go beep, but if you don't, you don't hear this. And it says, download complete. Okay, so you're talking to the kiosk. Because there's, there's no uh, 
person there. Uh, and a uh, swipe your digital storage device. Do you have like a data pad, a hand computer? So it a map appears on the display of the kiosk. administrative offices like for uh booking passage or selling cargo and stuff like that like maybe a broker's office or something there's also a hotel yeah you're all together you all got off the truck Now, just make sure you deduct 200,000 credits off the total. Right. The first thing first thing that clued them in was you were on a stolen Imperial shuttle. Okay, so you um, you go to the brokerage house. There are actual people here. And they are working with uh, robots. The robots are more like assistants or um, number crunchers and stuff like that. <clears throat> but there's people there. And you find um, a broker that glances up at you guys and says, Oh, welcome to Tech World. <clears throat> Do you have cargo to sell? Okay, <clears throat> but you're not selling them, you're just wanting to find out what their value is? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, 
The fee to do the appraisal is going to be 1,000 credits. In advance. Because what if it's worthless? Okay, so 1,000 credits. All right. <clears throat> so... Um, do you, uh, what do you, before we begin, approximately, what kind of value are we, are we anticipating? All right, follow me. He gets up and he looks over at one of the robots and he says, Virgil, take my calls. And then, and then you guys follow him into one of the back rooms where he's got this machine that he's going to put these gems through. So, place, he, he gives you a couple of plastic uh, tubs. You know, they look like um, wash basins or whatever. He says, put your gems in here. Out of the sacks, dump them in there. Yeah, we don't want anything to that might interfere with the readings. Okay, so you dump your gems into the into the bins, and then he pushes the bins down this little conveyor belt, very much like <laughs> TSA scanning your luggage, and he he runs it through there, and it seems like there's some whirring and some buzzing and some some gears going and lights flashing and then a few moments later he says it looks like um i he basically gives you the carrot ratings and the and the uh, like molecular readout and and the, the the value of the cut and things like this, but not like a percentage. But I can't give you a price value because that's subjective and that's depending on the buyer. But He can give you a certificate of like the everything that he was able to determine and but since you're not selling it, I can't find a buyer and I can't give you a price. But what I can do is give you like a an estimate of what you know, but that's not going to be written down on the the paper. It says based on the carrots that have been uh, revealed and the, the cut and the purity and all that stuff it looks like it would be just under 10 million credits about 200,000 less than 10 million <laughs> you don't have to sell them all either you can sell like half or whatever Twenty people living on it. I don't buy, I find buyers. I can try. But we're looking at we're looking at like twenty people on this planet. Half of them work at the spaceport. Well, 
Well, type A is the quality, not how busy it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come through here. No, we don't sell. No, Tech World does not sell anything. The tech level is the quality of the technology here on this planet. It's, it has nothing to do with what you can buy or sell. It's, it's where you come to experience technology, not to acquire it. Not to buy diamonds. Nope, you're not in the you're not in the empire. Now, if you wanted to, if you wanted to sell them like a small quantity at a greatly decreased rate I'm sure I could find you a buyer like let's say you had a hundred thousand worth of gems and you wanted to sell it for like 10,000 credits I'm sure I could probably find somebody that was willing to buy it right because it's a steal but if you have a hundred thousand credits I don't know anybody on this planet that has 100,000 in their bank, is what I'm trying to say. But if you just wanted to get some extra credits, you know, to, uh, for whatever passage off planet or whatever, you could do that. I think so. I I can get you off the I can get you back to Where are you sending it to? Okay. Expo route, yeah. Um, I'm checking to see if there is anybody like with a word out that they're looking for gems. Ah, here we go.
Okay, no pluses there. But also no minuses. Okay. So let me get to my chart. one week per jump plus the amount of time for the mail Okay, there there is a there is a standing uh purchase of uh gems this one researcher is looking for a specific type of gems and i noticed that you had uh 201,000 credits worth of gems in your collection and he's willing to pay 201,000 credits for them Okay, so um, you can just add 201,000 credits and deduct 201,000 credits of gems. <clears throat> yep. Correct. Now, that was... Uh, that was incredibly good because I rolled an 11. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, um, yeah, so ships come and go through here on a regular basis, but they don't go to Drenax. They go to PAL and they go to Acrid. Now you might find there is a this far trader just landed. They're trying to offload some uh, exotic outfits. You mean the the ships that are in port, like where they're going? Yeah, you just yeah, I can look that up for you if you want or you could go to the uh the 
information kiosk slash the uh, not the tourism board but the the um, where you like just outside my office there's a but I can get the information for you um, there's there is one other ship in port and it's going let's see one two three It's going to Hilfer. I don't understand the question. No, that was that was the that was the ship you just came off of. No, but there's another ship in port and it's going to Hilfer. Yeah, the um, you'll have to see what they have available, but yeah, you can shoot for try try to get mid passage. All right, so you want to go you want to go approach that ship or or call the ship? Yeah, they well, they are um they are looking for passengers and they're also looking for cargo. Um my understanding is they're looking to just they're speculating, they're shopping the market, but there's not really anything here for sale. Um, and <clears throat> they are looking for passengers because I think they're just trying to cut their losses. Yeah, so you can go you go over to the gift shop and there is a robot attendant there. Uh and he's like Welcome to Tech World where you can find absolutely anything that you your heart's desire. What can I help you with? Yeah, a little bit. Um, and so you, uh, you ask him for a communicator and he's like, we have, uh, local communication devices that, uh, use the communication network on the planet, but are you looking for a radio? Well, this can send and receive as long as you're on the planet, connected to the cell towers. Uh, 
Okay, well, um, I have this earpiece communicator that you could, uh, it's got a five kilometer range. Is that, is that good? 200 credits. Okay, it's like a little Bluetooth headset, you know, kind of thing. And it has a five kilometer range. Negl no weight at all. It's not, it's not smart. It doesn't have like a built-in computer or anything. It's just, just a radio. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You, you have like a little, you have your frequency that they could dial in. <clears throat> it's less than a com dot. <laughs> com dots are smart. Yeah, this is, this is uh, just a, uh, it's like a Bluetooth. Two hundred credits, no weight, zero weight. Okay, um, so you call uh, the ship. The ship is called Handros. Is it called Handros or is it called the Dealer? Okay, the ship is called Handro's Ship. And you call it, and you get someone that gets on the line, and he says, This is the dealer. Handro Venquist. And what can I do for you? Are you here to buy or sell? Because I'm buying. If you're selling. You're the one that called. Well, what are you selling? What are you selling? Or what? What? Are, what do you? What do you? We don't have any cargo currently on our ship. We are buying. If you are selling, okay. Are you heading to Hilfer? Uh, you're right. It is. Um, we're heading to Hilfer, um, but currently we're shopping for cargo if you're selling. If you're not selling, then we're not buying. But if you want passage, we have, uh, how many staterooms are you going to need? That's fine, because we... We have seven uh, open and available. Uh, but um, we're looking for high passengers. If you're uh, if you're trying to become well, we also have low passage. We have six low passage available. Um, but if you were if you were wanting mid passage, you can put yourself on a waiting list. And if we don't fill up with high passengers, then we can take whatever is remaining in our staterooms with mid. Or what I'm trying to say is, you can you can ask us to. To, uh, you can ask us to offer mid, but if someone with high passage comes, we're going to bump you. Just being straight up and honest. 
Well, if you want us to take you all the way to Drenax, uh, that would be 20,000 per person. Yeah. 20,000 per person will take you to Drenax through, through Hilfer. But you're going to have to wait. Uh, we're not going to make like an immediate jump once we get to Hilfer. We're going to try to negotiate cargo prices. Buying or buying or selling, uh, if we can find anything here, it doesn't look like anybody here on Tech World is selling anything. Oh, well, that's okay. We didn't have any cargo to sell anyway. We were empty when we got here. Actually, uh, we we made a we made contact earlier with a ship called Putting Along, and they look like they're selling some apparel. So we might actually buy that, depending on if they give us a good price or not. Oh, okay. That's a good that's a good tip to know. Might be able to sell it at a higher rate. Yeah, when you work um you can come on board at any time. Uh, just bring your credits when you come on board. We'll be leaving in probably about three days. Sounds good. I'll be waiting for you. Uh, it sells, I made it to Tech World, and all I have is this lousy t-shirt. They sell um, filter masks, uh, which are basically, they're like combo masks uh, that you wear in your nose. You, they're like nose clips. They still hang out, but and they do make a little noise. They're like big... Um, aboriginal nose ring kind of things they're pretty big but it just clips on the nose you don't have to, it doesn't cover your whole face or anything uh but they also have like hoods that you, like a like a plastic bag that you can throw over your head um because that's the fashion these days and you also have um magazines that are like a year old and they they talk about the weather and the, the local fauna and stuff like that. Um, and there is a there is a mention of a of a swordfish that is a is a delicacy in this area. Um, and there's videos of people uh, fishing for the swordfish. Right. Oh, there, there might be a, there might be like a keychain or, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Airport gift shop, air, airport gift shop stuff. Yeah, it's right, right there. <laughs> um. Okay.
Yeah, there's certain requirements to be able to carry mail. I'm not sure if this merchant has the, met those requirements. Okay, Mason, what else? They're just, they're just going to stand there staring at the poor walls? They're milling about. <laughs> By yourself? Okay. Well, you can get one of those earpiece communicators for 200 credits. Nope. Yeah. Yeah, this is not a very popular world. They're, they don't have what you would expect on a big planet that has a lot of commerce coming and going. This is a world that has a spaceport. And from the, the private message, yes. <laughs> well, near your <laughs> okay. So when you when you come onto the ship, right? And uh, Handro is your typical ship captain. He does have a he does have a sidearm that he's wearing on his on his hip, uh, and he he has an outfit that makes you think that he's seen one too many Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Like he's got a bandana tied around his head. He's got heavy, heavy eyeshadow. His mustache is a little bit too long. His hair is unkempt. And, and, and his, he's got like a leather jerkin over his shirt that's got big puffy sleeves and uh and he says so you're you're here to buy uh passage to Drinax for for five people are you gonna um is there any story behind this uh this passage that you need to get to Drinax Not a lot of people on Tech World trying to leave or show up. Right, it's it's kind of yeah. Um, okay, well, well, when you um, when you board the ship, we're going to need to take all your weapons. And we're gonna put them. We're gonna put them in the lockup. Um, our the other ship warned us about you. The, they said that you were. Um, you backed down once they threatened you and that you didn't 
like you didn't hurt anybody you didn't like do any damage to the ship so you know and, and you paid them like handsomely so so we're willing to take you that's not a problem but just understand we're going to be keeping our eyes on you and we got to take your weapons okay well other than that um we were able to buy that cargo from them uh and and you said that it was probably a good deal on drinax so that's good we'll do that we'll take them with you i mean we'll take it with us all right so um do you just want to stay on the ship you're welcome to stay on the ship or you can uh stay in the hotel in town or you can find some other arrangement Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're paying. You're you're paying for it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You're very welcome, and uh, I hope our journey is a little bit less eventful than your last one. Okay, perfect. I noticed that you guys are carrying combat armor. That's, yeah, that's, um, that's, uh, that's, um, not a lot of people are, you know, like, you guys seem like you're well funded, so that's, that's good. Yeah, when you're on the ship, absolutely, because now, because out in the world, it's thin atmosphere. So, uh, yeah, so you can definitely, if everybody wants to just stay on the ship, you're welcome to, and we can advance time if you want to do that. Right, it's just a stop. Um, okay. Yeah, that's um, what I was looking at. It wasn't originally one of our destinations. I might not have it available. Okay, give me a second. Well, it has a 10, yeah, it has a 10 law level, which is really high. No. I think that was Clark or or or, or Torpal. I think it might have been Torpal. Right. Um worlds. Oh, here we go. Let's use Control F. 
Um, is it spelled with an L? L fur. No, um, that's just data. I'm looking for the campaign information. Okay. Okay. As zero gas giants, not enough water to refuel on. Here we go. It's a hot desert world. Uh, during the bump, during the bombardments, uh, they lost their ability to reclaim water, which, um, looks like seven digits. Well, tech six, probably not. That's true. It is a desert world and it is a poor world. Uh, it's fairly small too. I would, yeah, might be low on the gravity. Oh yeah, Drenax is high high tech. Yeah, uh, anything you need, I'm sure you can get at Drenax because the uh, we're working for the king, so I don't see a problem with that. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's fast forward. Are you guys trying to take over the ship? Okay, so when you get to Hilfer, are you gonna? Are you gonna? When you get to Hilfer, are you gonna try to do anything on this desert world? Because if you say no, I'm just gonna go to Drenax. What is on the planet? Sand. It looks like, it looks a lot like Tatooine or whatever, you know. That level of technology, you know, you got, not counting the speeders and the blasters, but, you know, you're looking at uh, Adobe Huts and... Uh, You you might even see craters, nuclear craters, because that was one of the planets destroyed by the Aslan when they attacked. <laughs> but if you want to go and go into the onto the surface and try to get into trouble, you can, or you can just stay on the ship and he'll be taking you. Nobody wants to buy his apparel uh, on Hilfer because it's not rugged enough it's more uh high end like business suits and stuff like that so if you want to go to uh just wait till you get to drinx right so you do get two weeks of studying right you get the you get the jump from tech world to hilfer and then you get the hilfer to drinx Right. So uh, now there's two things. The, now that you're back at Drenax, the 
treasure ship adventure is over with and you get points for the treasure ship but you also get uh the time thing so let me do one before we do the other is that the right one that is the right one I think it's right here. That's right. Okay, it's apparently, apparently it's not there. Yeah, it's the palace or the palace. There's only the palace. It's a floating city, right? And the, the city is called the palace. You can. It's, they've, they've got shops. It's a it's a floating city. It's a floating city. Hmm. Hmm. I'm having a hard time locating that. I thought it was in the rules.
Is his share only 10%? You have not sold the gems. You, when you sell the gems, it's a die roll to see how much you get for them. So you can't just cash them out. Okay. <clears throat> Right, you owe him 10% of the gems. Oh, here it is. Yeah, it's skills and training. It should be under skills and training. But it's not. Advancement. Okay. That's career advancement. Not what I'm looking for. You've, you've said that a number of times already. I've already read the companion book inside and out, and I've decided which rules I'm using and which ones I'm not. Um, and that's where this, okay, this 2022 book must not be the same as the second edition book. I think it's missing something. So, maybe both rules are in the companion. Double check. Training and experience. Yeah, my. I might have been using training. There's adventure experience, which you are going to be getting. Yeah. Yeah, since I can find that one rule, let's go ahead and do that while I search for the second rule. Um, everybody's getting two points for uh, these have to be spent immediately. Um, okay.
Okay. Yeah, they have to be allocated. They cannot be held in a pool. Okay, uh, to gain a skill at level zero, cost, you remember everybody gets two points. So to gain a skill at level zero costs one experience point. If you already have zero, gaining it at level one uh, from zero would cost one more point. And then after that, it's doubled. So going to two would cost two points. Going to three would cost four points. Going to four would cost eight points. <clears throat> Plus, if you wanted to increase a characteristic, um, you can spend the point on a characteristic and it would be considered spent, not in a pool, so you can't later pull from it. Uh, but it does cost whatever you're going to that many points. So if you have a strength of four and you want to get a strength of five, it would cost you five points. Uh, intelligence and education is double. Okay. Yep. Correct. Well, one point from zero to one. Yeah. Here we go. I found the training, the study periods. Once eight weeks of training or learning has been accumulated over any length of time, uh, at this end point, you must succeed on an eight education check. The success indicates that you've learned something. Uh, if, it, if you were studying a brand new skill, it would go to level zero. If you fail the role, you got to restart the training. Because it basically meant that you were distracted or you didn't really pay attention to the book or you didn't get the full amount. Um, it's an eight and it's education. With one of your points, that's right. <clears throat> no, if you already have zero, it'll only cost one to go to one. Right, so you got to restart your training periods. Correct. Right. And now don't forget to write down your new training, whatever you want to study. Do you have any do you have any engineering at all? Okay. Then you're good. Uh if you if you advance something to level one, 
Don't forget, some skills have specialties. Right? So if you pick, if you go to Gun Combat 1, you have to pick uh, Slug or Laser. Uh, from 1 to 2 costs 2 points. I, on what? What are you trying to study? Well, I thought you I thought you were going from zero to one. Yeah, if you've already if you've already got slug one, you can change it to two for two points. Yep. Yeah, there you go. At level at level zero. Okay. That'd be one. That's one point. Or you could take a zero up to level one with the second point. Okay, gets rid of a three-point negative, which might be better than just an extra plus one. <clears throat> um, failing a study period does not necessarily mean that you have not understood the study materials, just you have failed to get anything useful out of them. Uh, if you study during jump, for example... You might find that the captain of the ship is constantly ordering you to clean the cargo deck. You might be dis might be distracted by a hobby or a new vid show, or they might just be spending their time sitting in their bunk eating sugary puff sandwiches while reading what space bike. That's Tom. That was Tomlin with his five. <laughs> it's con con constantly getting distracted. That's right. Okay, so um, you guys land at uh, Duranax, which I think, I know, I should have like a little palace. Hopefully you can see all that. Is it black or can you see everything? Okay, perfect. So, um, that, well, that's true. That's, that is true. Okay, so location art. No. I figured it'd be under location art. Hmm. Maybe it's under the world. Drinx. Okay, so I'm going to put this in your thingamajigger. Um, so you can pull this up at any time that you want. Uh, but yeah, they got the... Um, Floating palace looks all golden and stuff. And then you've got something you know. At Drenax, they have this orbital spaceport, which you're not at. He actually landed uh, at 7, which is the like a 
like a platform on the side. Um, you personally, your ship might be located over here at number one at the top of the map, which is where the royal docks are. And this is what the world underneath the floating palace looks like. It is called the Wasteland, exactly. Um, I'm not sure if I had shown you this, but we're going to go ahead and show you this too. It's a lot of information at Drunax because this is the this is a jump off place. You can see there's not a lot of population because there's only this floating palace can only hold so many people, uh, and they got a pretty strict law level. Weapon possession is prohibited, uh, mainly because it's kind of under martial law, but they have a really high tech level. Um, the palace is guarded by warriors that uh, wear these little wings on their back. And they're called Hawk Warriors. Um, okay, so you have just landed uh, the, the ship that brought you here is um, going about its business. Or a binder. <laughs> One tenth of the gems. Um, while you guys are like gathering your belongings and you're leaving the ship and trying to decide what you want to do, a couple of hawk guards come up to you and say, oh, welcome back. The king has been expecting you. Um, follow me. Okay, so he takes you to the... Uh, the palace throne room, which is directly in the center. All of you. 
Yeah, yeah. Taking all of you. Uh, when you go in, he, he basically escorts you past the starport area, which is the public starport area, number six, uh, and then past the, the gardens, which is kind of like a central park. And on the, on the other side is the star guard barracks, which is his military force. Uh, military, you know, the soldiers and stuff like that. Uh, and then straight in to the palace. And you see these hawk warriors from time to time all over the place. They're not, um, they're not harassing anybody or, or, you know, shaking anybody down or whatever. But when you walk by with your belongings, they immediately perk up like, Oh, um, that's the, uh, the Kestrel's crew, they're, and, and, uh, I think they're allowed to carry their stuff, so they basically give you a little bit of leeway to carry your weapons and armor with you, uh, and, I'm on the wrong page. Not that one. It's not that one. Maybe it is that one. Hold on. Hmm. Okay. That's the chase. Ah, here we go. Okay, so uh, you go in and we have uh, King Olib sitting on the throne. It's called the Dragon Throne. Which it looks like it's made out of spare metallic parts or maybe ship components or whatever, but it's it's this giant dragon overhead mouth gaping maw, and then the throne's built into it. And he's sitting in there. Standing next to him is his son, Prince Herrick. Uh, and as soon as you walk in, the king stands up. And, and, <laughs> and, uh, and he says, Oh, you've returned. Uh, now, your, your crew returned the Kestrel, and they said something about you uh, raiding a treasure ship and uh, recovering a ship, uh, but I see the reports are you did not bring it with you, so tell me, tell me what the story is. What is going on? What have you, br what have you brought for me?
Oh. Okay. Great. Okay. And then Herrick steps forward to accept the data drive. Okay. Everyone everyone can make a recon roll. Yeah, so Jump and uh, Ildritz, oh, and Tomlin, you all see someone in the, sh in the shadows watching. Yeah, 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 they're being, they're being secretive. Like they're like they're not supposed to be there. Oh, okay. Herrick holds his hands up. He's standing there with his hand out. Okay, Herrick, Herrick speaks up, and he says, You don't have to kneel to me. I'm not the king. Okay. The 10%. Okay. Well, this is a sizable amount. And then he walks up to his father, and he and he hands him the the gems and the data drive. Dinner tonight. He basically did. You came at a you came at a great time. Um, we're having a state dinner this evening for an honored guest, and you would be all invited. So be sure to wear your best. There will be there will be drinking and eating and business will be discussed. Sure. Um, yeah. To have your gems appraised or something? Or to buy them? Yeah, in that case, you'll have to go to the spaceport. 
that's quite a that's that's quite a bit of uh, a lot of gems. I might be interested in buying some of them, but we have other problems. Is it something that can be discussed at dinner, or is this more of a private in? Well, great. I'll see you then. <clears throat> um, oh, and your ship is in port, so if you, if you go to the northern, we'll just say northern port where the royal uh, landing pads are, it's docked over there. Your crew has been waiting for you for a few weeks now. There will be a lot of notable personalities at dinner, so it'll give you an opportunity to get to meet them and um, and work through some you know work work through the dinner and maybe um, maybe. <laughs> Um, expand your horizons, I guess. Okay, so he stands up and he leaves the palace, the throne room. The brothers, or the son, stands there. Um, a little knowledge. Those of you that have been on this palace before, and you might have heard this, or I'm trying to refresh your memory from maybe a previous campaign, the brother was dead. Not the, I keep saying brother. The son. The son was dead. He, die, he died. And they brought his body to the palace. And now he's alive. They brought his body like 20 years ago to the palace. And now he's alive. Just something to think about. Okay, and so <laughs> the the princess is the one sitting over in the side, hiding, watching, and the prince is watching you guys uh, from the throne. He's standing next to the throne. He's not sitting on it. And the guards are just basically they don't care. You guys are super. You guys are you guys are super trusted. It's like. <clears throat> they, the guards personally might not trust you, but apparently the king does, and that's good enough for them. Okay, so are you going to go back to the ship and drop off all your stuff, or are you going to go immediately to shop with, like, combat armor on and carrying around weapons and stuff like that? I assume I assume you go dump all your stuff off. You don't want to carry it all around with you. Um, so, and, and then you get whatever credits you need to uh, go do your shopping. Um, and then you probably need, to, and at some point over the next few days, you'll probably uh, put feelers out to see who might be willing to buy some gems. Uh,
Yeah. You don't, did you leave money on the ship or are you just completely broke? Oh. Right. <clears throat> Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to uh, go back to your ship. We're going to drop everything off. And then and then you guys are getting ready to go into town, uh, share money or, you know, loan each other money or whatever you want to do. Or maybe the crew captain maybe pays the crew for for uh, being a part of this crew, uh, their, their, their salaries. And then, but we can do all that next week. Because it's like 5 till 10. So this is a great stopping off point. Plus it'll get me ready for the dinner. Uh, the beginning. The beginning of a whole new chapter. Okay, so you want to work that out real quick? Right. <laughs> okay, now the now I want to I want to break some news. I want to break some news to you guys. Uh Bill who's playing jump uh it won't be with us anymore. He, he came back to he came back he, he wanted to finish out this little uh adventure back to Drinax uh but he he can't continue personal reasons Yep Absolutely yeah, well, uh, now, with your permission, I'm going to take your character and turn you into an NPC that still works on the ship. There you go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, so, uh, everybody, I'll see you next week. Same time, same bat channel. All right, you guys have a good night. All right, guys, thank you for coming out and checking out this stream. Uh, it was a little tough getting back into it because we missed a couple of weeks, uh, or I missed a couple of weeks. Uh, but now, and, and, I, and I knew that it was going to be a, tr a, a, a challenge for them to get back to the palace with no money. But they had gems, they just couldn't sell them anywhere. Because every planet they went to just didn't have the market for it. So, but now they do. I'm gonna they're gonna be able to they're gonna be able to sell their gems and get a ton of money here on this station, and then they can actually get their ship um some repairs done on this on this station as well. And then uh so that'll that'll be a good thing for them. But this new adventure that's coming up might put a wrench into it. But we'll experience that all next week. All right.